This episode of Apes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This Luca Parrish, and you are listening to Vacation the Ooh, the Sidekicks podcast. What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? What about our Quasar podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Wendell Wong, the first Earthman ever appointed protector of the universe, bonded to the energy transforming quantum band that are both weapons and symbols of a station to fight the ongoing battle to defend all life in the universe with cosmic evil as crazy. Sorry to tell you, Punky, but you're bonded to the quantum bands this episode. <laughs> Welcome back to the Quantum Zone, episode 123. I am Phil. Joining me as always, master of the Quantum Zone. I am Will. Hey, everyone. And master of the helium balloons. It is. This is Matt. There's a oh, balloon above my head. I see that. <laughs> you may have seen it, it was it was for a birthday in May, but you know what? I'm getting my my balloons worth. So it stays up there until it comes down. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. So, yeah. Have you seen the movie about his life? You know, up. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So news. Well, hmm. Well, ca- I'm getting a bunch of uh, it's all We're almost back to uh, pre-pandemic comic schools. Uh, although I think most want to give them tomorrow's DC, but it in you know, three Marvel books. Uh, Oh, I saw a link. I know theaters around here have been, uh, they say you can rent the theater for you and 19 of your friends for $50. And I put what? It, yeah, I guess they're hurting for business that bad. Yeah, you can, for 50 bucks, you can rent out a theater for 20 people to watch a movie. <laughs> That's like two movie tickets sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah. And my wow. response was uh, creeping death. I know. <laughs> I swear he like never responds immediately, but then this morning he's like, Great big death. I'm like, well, that's why they only let you do 20. It's like, you know, for distancing. Great big death. <laughs> Still creeping death. Yeah. You just slightly lowered the odds of creeping death. Okay, okay. Well, what movie what movie if you could have any movie in that theater, would would you take the chance on and go see it in the theater? Ooh. Anything. Is that part of the deal? They let you pick. No, I, I don't know. Oh, but I'm okay. just saying, yeah. well, what movie would entice him to get it? I don't. Yeah, I don't know what if, if it's just new stuff. Okay, well, there's my there's my favorite movie, and then there's the movie I'd probably want to see in there. Ooh. And my favorite movie. Everybody is like, they're like, but you're a nerd. Why is that your favorite movie? I'm like, I love Rio Bravo. Oh, John Wayne, mm-hmm. okay. Ricky Nelson, Dean Martin. It's awesome. I just love the movie. It's just a great movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, it would probably have to be Empire Strikes Back. Oh, nice. Yeah. And that 40th year anniversary is yeah. like right now or recently. Yeah. This is right. Year. This is the year. 40 years ago. Wow. Yeah. You belong in the clouds with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. not true. I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would try to think of like maybe a movie that I never saw in theaters that would be cool to see in a big screen, or maybe a movie that I saw in theaters as a kid that left an impression on me. So take some thinking. Hmm. You know what I never saw in the theater that I wish I had that might be worth it? Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, I actually saw that with oh, my wife in the theaters. That was an, she was like, this is a cartoon. I'm like, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're gonna go see it. That's yeah. like it always comes up in my head. They're like, what, <laughs> you know, what have you? Ne- what did you never see in the theater? You wanted to see him like that, man. Mask of Phantasm. That I- came to a local, a real cool independent theater at, as a midnight movie, and I, I wanted to see it, but it was one of those things where it was either like a long day or an early morning the next day, and I was like, oh, I want to see this at midnight, but. <laughs> I I would have to like corral some people to to go and to convince me to go, and it just didn't end up panning out, and then the world blew up. So I don't know. So, <laughs> so so what you're saying is you wanted to go see it, but it was a long dark night. It was. 
But Mass, Mass of the Phantasm is on Netflix now. So. I know. Why have it on Blu-ray? Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the other end. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. The uh, the boys. Uh, I remember That's showing series. that. That's a great series. Yeah. Yeah, I remember showing that series. Well, not that. <laughs> I know. My, yeah. my sons. Yes. <laughs> um, and I may have showed it to him too early because it's got some pretty intense scenes in it. You know, with because they were like, oh. They phantasm scared him, and it was oh you know, yeah. I mean, he's off in mobsters. I mean, he drops the statue and that one guy in the cemetery. And uh, apparently, I hear about it because yeah, phantasm scare you scarred us, Dad. So I apparently, scarred my kids. <laughs> I thought you were a Southern Dad. Aren't you like I didn't know I was raising no sissies. <laughs> I'm different than yeah. I I live in Northwest Arkansas, so. We're, we're we're suburban. I believe in evol- <laughs> I believe in evolution. That's right, I do. <laughs> now, no, Luke and I have been watching uh, Batman Beyond. Mm. We're on uh, season two. We're only like halfway through season two, maybe. Yeah, he likes it. You know, that's a really good show. But there was a part of me that just was like, "That's Spider Man." Okay, there's oh, just Spider Man 2099, maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's so much stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, there's you ever see that one episode? Is it season one where uh, those three astron or those three scientists get superpowers and it's kind of like a Fantastic Four knockoff? I kind of remember that. I, I love, I remember loving the uh, was it Ink? Was that her name? Yes, yeah, that's that really character. Cool. Yeah, that was cool. I but there was as, as much as I love the animated series. Mm. I really didn't like the relationship they established between Barbara Gordon and Batman. I just, I didn't like that. Yeah. Where they kind of dated. Yeah. I mean, they, mm-hmm. what was that movie mystery, the Batwoman or something. Yeah. They were kind of started dating there. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Oh, and don't even get me started on that. The killing joke animated movie. Yeah. I'm not going to get you started on that. <laughs> It's just creepy. It's like an older guy dating his best friend's daughter. Yeah, I know. It's weird. It's very weird. <laughs> very, very weird. I don't know why they did that. But, I mean, yeah, the animated series is, is awesome. I mean, it still influences oh, yeah. stuff today. That's what I said. It's like kids can watch it. Adults get something out of it, too. Yeah. And then, then they started with the Superman. Animated, yeah. Animated. There's just like whole what do they call it? The uh the Dennyverse, I guess. You know, the the cartoons that started with Batman the animated series. Oh, it's it's the, the, the Timverse, the Bruce Timverse, Tim yeah. yeah. Uh then the like Justice League. Yeah, there was like two seasons of Justice League, then it went Justice League, uh International or Justice Unli- League Unlimited. Unlimited, yeah. Yeah. And they brought in like a ton of characters there, yeah. Then you had Batman Beyond, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty interesting, and then um, they're bringing Mask of the Phantasm into continuity, aren't they? In uh, I think so. I think there was some. I thought there was some Batman Beyond comic miniseries where they kind of already had that character or something. So I think I remember seeing it maybe in Tom King's uh, Batman and Catwoman. Series oh, or something. Maybe. yeah, yeah. I think they're yeah. He's doing something with that. That with that there too. Yeah. I mean, and that was quite an spoilers for a thirty-year-old movie at this point. <laughs> yeah. So don't listen if you want to know the end of Batman: Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, right. Um, but the ending of that was just so kind of unexpected. You but know? I know because you know the way she was with the Joker, but we know the Joker shows up again. Yeah. So. Batman. Well, what is it? Yeah, exactly. What does it what does it all mean? <laughs> Matt, can you tell us what it means? Please tell me. <laughs> there Aww. was a I'm trying to fi- figure out what it is, but but there was a uh, comic only sequel to Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, I did not know this. Yeah. Let's see. What was I, it called? I that's what I'm trying to look up because I I remember listening to a podcast about it and then uh oh that's what i gotta do i gotta we, i gotta whoever wants to join in i gotta do like a live 
watch of Batman Mask of the Phantasm and get like Ray in here with us because I don't know if he's ever saw it. That'd be cool. Batman. I know you're excited. Yeah. <laughs> oh my uh, god. But yeah, you're talking about all this Superman and stuff. Like my favorite episode of that Superman animated series was of course like Batman related. Like Batman goes missing and so like Superman takes his place, like he puts the suit on and stuff. So him and Robin go looking for Batman and <laughs> they're like interrogating the penguin in his office. And like Robin's like, kick over the desk. And Superman's like, what is it? Kick over the desk. And Superman like, almost puts the desk through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's such crazy. And then, and then like a counter Bane and he's like upped his venom and stuff. So he thinks he's like going to easily crush Batman, but it's really Superman. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> then he's oh, and Hmm. There was a movie, wasn't there? Superman, Batman yes! versus yes! Luther and Joker. Oh my God, the boys had that thing on repeat, like yeah, I think it's the thousand Batman times movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, then when they first meet, yeah, Batman just like like flips Superman over his shoulder. <laughs> so Superman like X rays his mask. He's like, "Oh, you're Bruce Wayne." <laughs> oh, then, dang it! <laughs> I know. Well, that Batman puts a tracker on him and like follows him home and yeah. Superman. Clark sees Clark, him out of his yeah. window and Batman's just like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that makes me want to watch those. I need to watch those again. I'll have to give it to the boys. We I know. Uh, we want to do we want to watch as soon as you know they're they're as soon as they decide to spend a few hours over here. We want to watch all of Dragon Ball Z. Ooh. Because that's just awesome. Um we're gonna rewatch uh Samurai Jack and then the new movie that you know the final season that came out season five and finish that off. Mm -hmm. I, I've got it here at the house. So I'm like, guys, it's been here for months. I really want to watch this. Yeah. And are we gonna do this thing? And they're like, Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> well that's like I was talking to Luke. I think I got him talked into it. I saw this thing online because um you know all those the flash and all those shows don't come back till January now. Mm -hmm. That are like Maybe I said, "Hey, we're gonna rewatch every episode." And he's like, "Yeah," because like I saw online, it's like if you start now and do like a season a month, yeah, I mean, because <laughs> there's six there's been six seasons so far, so yeah, you'll hit season six in December, and then boom, it starts in January. And that's only like an episode a day. But that's an episode. <laughs> yeah, not, not even because <laughs> season's only like twenty two episodes or something. So oh, yeah. yeah, that's easily accomplished. Do that standing on your head, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. Is that enough DC in your Marvel podcast? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So should we get to this issue? Yes. Let's do it. For a fistful of Quasar. <laughs> oh, that's your great uh, fistful of dollars theme there that you had earlier. When oh, I yeah. Hey, <laughs> little Western. There we go. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, uh, instead of Master of the Quantum Zone, I think it's going to be like uh, the Duke himself, Will Allred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much of a John Wayne fan in particular, but I just love that movie. So, <laughs> I think my favorite Western is uh, Back to the Future 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, so tonight, Quasar 45, the still, <laughs> we were waiting for you, Kona's like, he's like, look, there's Quasar without the bands, but he looks kind of happy with the bands up in the corner box there. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> looks much happier with the bands than without. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, Quasar 45 from April 1993, uh, <laughs> Battleground Earth. Actually, I believe that to bring this back on target or go back to where we started, I think Mask of the Phantasm came out in 93, like December. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're close. We're Man, very close. This makes me feel old. This is before, yeah, Mask of the Phantasm even. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> but Battleground Earth, I was going to say, isn't that a movie? That was a uh, Battlefield. Battlefield, yes. Yeah. 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 Travolta. Scientology film. <laughs> yeah. But this was not created by Scientologists that I know of. It was written by Mark Grunwald writer Grant Meum and 
David and Dan Day guest artists. We had three guest artists, so. Wow. Yeah, don't expect uh, uh, consistent art. <laughs> Rick Parker, letterer, Paul Beckton, colorist, Mike Rockwitz, editor, Ralph Macchio, group editor, Tom DeFelco, editor in chief. So we got three. We have three artists and three editors. So. I think Grant is the penciler and David Dan were the inkers. Uh, sure. Okay. I was gonna say uh, I joked, but it did. I mean, the art didn't seem to like get too. Didn't seem to differ. So, okay. All right. Remember where we're at. Uh, uh, Quagmire disappeared, and Quasar is facing this giant. Oh, did you? Speaking of that, did you do the research? Oh, uh, no, I did not. But uh, that's what the internet's for. That's what the internet's for. <laughs> I believe it was, uh, wasn't it New Warriors? 3? I think it was New Warriors. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Forces of Darkness, Forces of Light, Act One. Crawling to the Shadows. So that's why he disappeared last issue. He shows up over in New Warriors. Uh, I can't because they usually do. Or is, that synops is there a synopsis? No, not written yet. Hmm. <laughs> See if I can find one. Yeah, because I think what was it somebody was like bringing together all the Dark Force users or whatever. Because I think they had cloak uh, silhouette from New Warriors. Yeah, um, and they got a bunch of the villains or whatever together. Yeah, there was who was the? He was part of the Mansion Siege. He kind of got brain damage there. Oh, uh, was it that um blackout? That he, blackout. Or, yeah. Yeah, because there was a couple of those blackout guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe maybe I found one on newwarriors.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is a big one. Uh, oh, yeah, because yeah, uh, Cloak gets taken of Cloak and Dagger fame. Uh, oh, this is so true. Shroud. Shroud's another guy that uses Dark Force. Yes. Oh, this is such a 90s issue. Spider-Man's in here. Archangel. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, uh, Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, but I don't see uh, Quagmire unless he's in the next issue or something. But yeah, I mean, there's a big whole thing with the Dark Force going on. Unimportant to our <laughs> <laughs> conversation. Mildly, check, out mildly. The, <laughs> check out the new Warriors podcast coming soon. To <laughs> learn more about that. Oh, don't tempt me, Kona. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. But, yeah. Night thrashings, we'll call it. Oh! <laughs> and only do episodes at 3 a.m. while people are can't sleep. They're thrashing in their bed. And they Welcome <laughs> back to Night Thrashers. <laughs> all right. But yeah, but remember, Quasar was still in North Carolina because Earth, somewhere in North Carolina. <laughs> Quasar's looking up at this giant black hand. Oh, great. That degenerate quagmire disappears, and suddenly this antibody creature he seemed to have a symbiotic relationship with grows to the size of a house. And Quasar like takes off in the air. Not about to let him smack me. Uh... Oh, I'll do this. Blast the New Yorkers. Why can't they just keep these super types to themselves? I may not have my quantum bands anymore. During the Infinity War, Quasar's existence was temporarily suspended, paused, suspended, and he lost his immovable quantum bands at that time. Movable Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. But this Starbrand tattoo gives me a, a few reasonably cool attributes. Run while we can! Never eat here again. Hey! As they're all Yeah, Mick Burgers. <laughs> Have it your way. Number of zillions served. Number <laughs> zillion. Wow. Wow. That must be a good quarter. Uh, Does Quasar have a rip in the center of his of his logo? Is he just pushed them out? It almost like, it just looks orange for some reason there. Yeah. Why? Maybe it's a McBurger's top secret sauce stain. Oh. That's, that's probably what it is. <laughs> it's really so, yeah. a thousand on the dressing. But he flies back down and flies through the antibody. Not only can I 
fly, but I'm stronger than a mule team. Let me see if I can use that power to knock the fight out of Mr. Big Britches. And whoa. I I went through him. I expected him to be solid. And it like splits into two. What in the hole's closing up and the chunk of black gunk I punched out is taking human form. This is not good. How am I supposed to subdue the giant if every poke I take at him results in a clone? A clone that seems to share the same general hostility the oversized original does. What's your problem, buddy? If not for me, you'd still be a part of your big brother. As the giant's just like stepping on McBurgers. All right. He wants to be my Russian scientist. Go for it, Matt. Because. All right. <laughs> In the realm of potential energy called the Quantum Zone and the podcast, a lone figure mars the pristine emptiness of non-space. His name is Sergei Krylov, though he refers to himself by the title The Presence. By whatever name, he's an exceedingly unhappy man. For months now, he has been suspended in the featureless void, having been exiled there by Quasar after attacking Quasar's now-deceased mentor, Eon. Way back in issue number 20. Oh my god, that was like the beginning of Cosmos and Collision. <laughs> Memorable Mike. <laughs> How long since we've been there? Jeez. A, a, Russian mutant who, a Russian mutant who lives on radioactive decay, Krylov is not bothered by the lack of food, water, or air. It is merely boredom that threatens his well-being. He lies in wait, hoping to catch a glimpse of Quasar when he passes through the realm in a space-warping quantum jump. <laughs> Good luck there to, right now. <laughs> he has yet to see him. The problem is, Quasar never remains long enough in the zone for Krylov to locate. But now, at last, he sees something, a speck of color violating the whiteness. As quickly as he knows how, he propels himself toward it. A hand, humanoid, severed? No. It seems to be surrounded by a nimbus of energy. It is not Quasar's hand. I do not see his distinctive bracelets. This may be the exit from the contemptible dimension I've been searching for all this time. I will pull through this hand, through the nimbus. Eh, it is pulling me back. Uh, it's pulled through a portal. I am free. You are not Quasar. Who are you? I'm Neutron, 4th Lieutenant in Her Magistric Lilian Lalandra's Imperial Guard of the Shi'ar Imperium. Are you Cree, Earthling, or otherwise? I am of Earth, though my allegiance is to no nation or individual thereupon. You speak the name Quasar. What do you know of him? It is Quasar who teleported me here and abandoned me during personal combat. Quasar number 33, Mike again. <laughs> I managed to thrust my arm into the space warp hole he retreated into. You know of him too? You look like a Russian guy, Colossus. Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> it is Quasar who abandoned me in the dimension into which this warp hole leads. Whatever else you may be, you are an enemy of my enemy, man of Earth. Might I propose we pool our resources in order to save ourselves from our mutual predicament? Yes, an exact justice upon the one responsible for our dishonorable treatment. Back on Earth. Uh, Quasar's got the little antibody in a uh, full Nelson in the midair. So come on, short stuff. Tell me, what is it you and your giant brother want? Please. I think you're related to that foot tall antibody I saw in that other universe. Issue 31. Back at you, crazy Mike. <laughs> Man, they, you got the editor's notes this time. But he was a little, he was a nice little imp that helped out a nice guy. How did you guys get here? And what's going to get you to stop running amok? All of you back. Move it behind the line. Who the heck is that blonde guy in the cape? Thor? <laughs> <laughs> And Quasar's still just talking to anybody. You're not being cooperative, and you're not a tenth the menace the giant is. Let's see if I can get you out of harm's way. And he what, grabs his wrist and... Ugh, not sure how strong the star brand makes me. High time I learned. One, two, three, lift! Wooly, will you look at that? I'm doing it. He's off the ground. 
man, why do I want to get to have my quantum bands back? I'm not good at using brute force. Where's he taking the thing? If I can manage, I'll tow this thing through the stratosphere and dump it in deep space. And then the the, the arm just breaks off with a blurch. <laughs> oh no. It's falling. People will be crushed. What can I do? Star brand. I've tapped I've tapped it as pure force once before, but I've got next to no control over it. No choice but to use it and hope that I don't expel too much. Here it goes. Just blast it into a bunch of little <laughs> antibodies. Oh no, I used the right amount of force all right. The right amount to blast the giant into a hundred flying six foot clones of itself. This Starbrand business is definitely not going well for me. Uh, and somewhere on the other side of the Milky Way, because we're still doing this, there's this <laughs> starship, its origin yet undefined. It contains a flying shuttle bus built by people called the Skadamites. A race who in recent weeks was all but exterminated. Inside the shuttle bus are two denizens of Earth who have had the misfortune of being Shanghai and Skadam in recent weeks. Their names, Kayla Ballantyne, who, like Quasar, possesses a portion of the star brand, and her companion, Holly Steckley. Where are we, Holly? What happened? Are we better off if we were trapped on Skadam, or have we jumped from the frying pan into the fire? Call me nuts, but I'm glad to be anywhere but that godforsaken planet. You're nuts. We've been captured by aliens. Who knows what they want us for? Maybe to eat us. Ooh. Don't be ridiculous. All this technology just to catch a few morsels of food. And then this big, scary looking. <laughs> Stay back. Iron Man <laughs> Basho comes in. <laughs> oh. Stay back. All right. And then. In orbit of Earth, even though it doesn't say that. <laughs> it has taken a month to whittle the 900 million mile journey down to a mere 5 million miles. But these two singular figures have pursued their common goal relentlessly, channeling all the energies at their command into near warp speed propulsion. At long last, the disk of the Earth looms large before them. Sergey, awaken. We are inside the orbit of Earth's moon. I've been awakened since past Mars, comrade. Also, can I just stop for a second? You know what he kind of looks like in this, the presence? He looks like uh, a, like a sort of a mashup. Baron Von Z 3 po <laughs> Nice. Anyone else see that? <laughs> All right. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> now I am within range to begin scanning for our enemy's brain patterns. If Quasar is anywhere within the Earth's biosphere, I shall pinpoint him. Our alliance has proven most satisfactory. When we find him, we will attack in unison in order to safeguard against his dispatching us as he had done before. He cannot, he cannot tell. Oh, yeah. No, no, okay. He cannot teleport us unless he touches us. We must avoid his grasp. Is that still me, or is that I you? think so. Just, I okay. think it sounds great. When I am through with him, he will lack the strength to grasp a crutch. Ooh, snap. That was fighting <laughs> words. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, oblivious below. Man, I wish I had my quantum bands. I'd bubble them all up in Q-Force and be done with it. Not so close, guys, as he's swinging that, dis dis uh, that severed hand, <laughs> that giant severed hand. Uh, oh, great. The big hand broke up into four more of them right after impact. What am I going to do? Think. I started blasting them. I start blasting them. They might blow apart into still more dark clones. So what am I supposed to do? Let them make me the squishy center of their flying monkey pal? I would if I could lure all of them into one place again. But I see a bunch of them rampaging below who don't seem to share the crew's and this crew's enthusiasm for stomping me. Whew. There's any way flying, monkey, flying monkeys are cool, by the way. I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, if there's any way the situation could be worse, I sure as heck can't see how. <laughs> Our quarry is directly below Neutron. Our moment of vengeance is imminent. Let us strike swiftly and savagely. Agreed. Sergey, I fail to see him. I, I do not either. 
The ebony beings flying about resemble me more than they do Quasar. They are denizens of your world? No, I've never seen them before. Back, you mindless multitude. I have no patience for anything but vengeance. You were, you were able to distinguish a single brain pattern from among the untold many that make up your world populace? But now that we're next to it, you cannot determine? I've located him. He is up there in the falling mass of ebony beans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are right. It is him. Is he dead? Uh, brain activity continues. I had hoped he would put up some sort of struggle as we meted out our retribution. It does not matter to me. Let us commence. Look at look at that panel at the top of the page, like where you guys just read. There's like white spots on Quasar's wrists. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, they're like maybe. sweatbands. Maybe he put those oh, there. Oh, maybe hey, he's sweating. I was gonna say, it's did like, someone did someone draw some quantum bands and they have to like yeah, take them out or something? Out. <laughs> I mean, it could also be as, as a guy who, uh, when I cut my beard, I all of a sudden had a pale neck. It could just be oh, and, and lines. So, and lines. That's it. There you go. They give me even no prize. Nice. All right. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Milky Way, Quasar's one-time companion, Kismet, leaves orbit. I am unable to follow it into warp space. The unknown power. Which that I, would be sorry. Kayla with the star brand. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> which I sensed on this alien world has vanished aboard an unidentified craft. I may never know what repulsed the alien invaders that devastated the world below. Time to quit the frustrating star system and return to... There's the cathedral shift that brought me here. My companion, Makari, may still be on board. I must... God, lost to me in warp space. It's not funny. (laughs) It actually kind of is. That seems like out of place. I know. Uh, Back on Earth... (laughs) Any last words before I strike you again? Please, guys, I don't have time for this right now. I've got to stop these gremlins. You wish for us to wait our turn to battle you? Is that it? Well, yeah, it could even help me. Ha! Like, rips his ponytail out. (laughs) Oh, man, guys with long hair really got it in the 90s. I mean, Lightwing had, like, a ponytail for a while then like the start of that first ongoing series man guy just like lops it off with a knife <laughs> superman had a ponytail oh, wow. for a while <laughs> yeah. Oh, man yeah uh so yeah quasar goes bouncing uh, after getting his hair ripped out ah! all right that's it i'm as proud as the next superhero but it's time to call in reinforcements hey peggy this is quasar i need we shall have none of that you idiot now you're making me mad. Oh, what do you think, madness? I was left to die in a featureless void. A lesser mind would have gone mad. Know my pain, Quasar. Oh, you still stand? I'm a lot tougher than you remember. I hadn't intended to let you die in the quantum zone, Sergey. I figured a genius like you would find the way out. But right now I'd give my left nostril to stick you back there. Yet, let go of me, Neutron. I cannot break his grip. Assist me. Throwing me outside the atmosphere so he can quantum jump once more. I only wish. I'm coming, Sergey. Unhand me, Quasar. Not a chance. You know what's ironic about all this, Prez? It's that our animosity is all based upon a misunderstanding. You lie. No, I don't. The first time we fought, you believed me to be a tool of a cosmic menace, thanks to some choice misinformation you were fed. (sighs) Were you to consult issues number 19, 20, and 24, you'd see Quasar's not just handing him a line. Mint copy M. (laughs) For my part, I mistook you for the cosmic assassin who gave you that misinformation. So this fight, like our last one, is all one big mistake. And he's thinking, got to keep the presence distracted until I can figure out what to do with them. 
just had an idea as he sees two hands come through the clouds. <laughs> Looking for your Brack. <laughs> yeah, Neutron runs right into the presence and stomach. Uh, oh, then there's a big explosion. Whoa, didn't expect that. Newt punched the hole in his armor, causing a violent energy release. Presence has been blown right into me. Ugh. Hit a pile of antibodies who, were fought, who followed us up here, too. Can't seem to staunch the flow of energy from his chest. We're hurtling downward. <laughs> too much momentum build up. Can't stop. All I can do is try to avoid those power lines. They hit the ground. Quit it. I'm crawling out of cr crater. This really stinks. It's not even funny. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Uh, uh, who the? Do, do, do you want um, who do you want, Matt, from the shock troop? Uh, oh. I just need a druid this time. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll be the dark man ripoff next time. Okay, we are the shock troop. Good grief! <laughs> so it ends like a Charlie Brown cartoon. Good grief! Good grief. <laughs> Concluded next issue. And then in two issues, we get the quantum bands. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Before we get the feedback, I forgot. I uh, I think I sent you guys the picture. But, yes, one of my anniversary presents for my wife, the Quasar figure. The yeah, only was, Quasar action figure. I was going to say, not my favorite <laughs> costume, but, yeah, it's pretty much the only action figure. Yeah. yeah yep. Man. Well, that's awesome. Uh, and It's such a weird grouping. It's like, look for these other figures on the back. You figured they'd be like cosmic figures. It's Morbius, Rogue, and Hydro Man. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't stretch those connections out to, to get to that. People, people who were big in the 90s? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Morbius and, and Hydro Man have a Spider-Man connection. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, <laughs> but that's very thin. I was going to say, Morbius had his own series in the 90s. I mean, Rogue was big in the yeah. 90s, uh, drawn yeah. by Lee. <laughs> yeah, I did like the Morbius series. I, I think that kind of launched around the uh, Midnight Suns. Yeah. Story. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Yeah. So, ready to hear some Ray feedback? Yes. Fire away. All right. Hey, uh, Phil, Will, and Matt, this is Ray. Going to drop in some thoughts for Ooh, Quasar number minutes. 45, A Fist Full of Quasar. I love the title. Uh, <laughs> main takeaway for me for, for this issue, I reckon, was the action. Um, shows that uh, Grunwald can, um, can do good action as well. I mean, not that I really had any doubt, but uh, his focus or... or the main appeal for me generally is his writing, uh, but this was great. This this had a lot of really fun action. Shows how, uh, I guess, invincible or how resilient uh, Quasar is with the Star Brand tattoo. But with that giant behemoth of a, <laughs> of a creature that kind of sprayed it out of Quagmire, uh, that was really fun. Uh, I loved how it kept on multiplying and every time he kind of... Wendell um, bashed it like a little piece came off and, and turned into a, another little creature. <laughs> um, so that was fun to actually see him. It was impressive to see him lift lift the creature as well. Uh, also, I really enjoyed the, uh, I guess, the payoff, you can call it, um, with some previous issues. There are a fair few edited notes here. Uh, Will, you would have enjoyed having this <laughs> add more uh, in very minuscule font. I must say as well, but now um, I had a look at them. Anyway, uh, Sergey and Neutron, uh, pretty fun to have them back and to have them kind of um, join forces to go against Quasar. Um, yeah, I found it was, uh, it, was, it was pretty fun for them to, to track him. Um, at first, I thought that Sergey had the, the better end of the deal as he was riding on the back of Neutron all the way, um, <laughs> all that distance I had to travel, but... I guess he was holding up his end of the bargain by uh, locating the brainwaves and something of, of Quasar. Um, so 
So that was, um, again, uh, not, little nifty details that Grunewald um, had put in there that made it made it quite enjoyable. Um, just kind of flicking through here, I thought the art was was quite quite cool. Uh, Grant Meme, uh, guest artist, and uh, Dave and Dan Day. Uh, I think they did a really good job, uh, with, especially with the look of, of Wendell. Uh, as well as everyone else. Uh, so, yeah, the use of the quantum zone uh, by us seeing uh, Sergei in there. Uh, what's he oh, saying? What is he usually called? Uh, the presence. Does he have a name other than oh, the presence? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll just call him Sergei. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, Neutron was fun. Uh, I love his aesthetic. Again, first time I ever saw him was, was in the Marvel handbook, um, but it's fun to see him there as well as you know previous uh issues what was it issue 33 uh when quasar kind of blipped him um to another portion of the galaxy oh neutron uh, yeah but a lot of fun uh i don't know there's not uh, i mean i'm just quickly going through uh, more shenanigans with taylor and holly no more reveal as to who holly actually is i know you guys are keeping that cl- uh, that card close to your chest last paper um, 49 buddy alien. i don't think Taylor would have any problem, uh, dealing with i mean she can come back to life for heaven's sake i'm sure she, she she can deal with that uh, very dodgy looking alien uh a little bit of kismet as well uh not much she's i think she's just tailing them though, isn't she um trying to so not much action there on her behalf it's not funny. Um, oh yeah, the, the one you you must have commented on this, guys. Uh, the impromptu haircut. Yes. So he loses. <laughs> I was very disappointed with that. Um, Neutron <laughs> basically punches him while holding his hair. So uh, still has uh, his locks in his mitt when when <laughs> plays. And but it's, he's done a fine job. He looks like his hair is quite um, quite neat. So maybe he can become a, a hairdresser. If he fails at uh, exacting vengeance, uh, <laughs> anyway, looking through here, uh, yeah, nah, nothing, nothing much other than again. Finally, I was just really impressed with that large kind of media esque explosion, uh, which shows again how durable Quasar is. Oh yeah, and the reveal at the end. Now, I don't know. Tell me that's not Jessica Drew, is it? If it is, then, or if it isn't, very similar costume. That's all I got to say. But um, I'm, I have no idea who these these shock troops are. I'm going to assume you almost look like Doctor Strange. Could be Doctor Druid. Druid. And uh, Druid. Anyway, I guess I'll find out later on. Uh, forward to your reading, guys, and yeah, keep it quantum. I mean, is this when they like de-age Doctor Druid? So yeah, Quasar loses the ponytail. Uh, Doctor Druid gets one. Gets a gets a ponytail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Shadow. What what's her name? Is it Shadow Lass or something? Here, I'm gonna look up this group because I mean, we're gonna get we're gonna get more with them next issue. But uh, yeah. Do they ever appear again? Um, I think the what is that? Uh, that the was it Blazing Skull or whoever the skull is? I think he shows up in an issue of Captain America. Okay. Well, that would make sense, Grimwald. So, yeah. Uh, what is that? Marvel Shock Troop? Was it Shock Troop? Mm hmm. Uh, yes. The <laughs> first sentence, the short lived group. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes. The Funks. Uh,. Doctor Doctor Druid, Blazing Skull, Shadow Woman, and the Living Mummy. Formed by Doctor Druid to battle supernatural evil. And this is their first appearance. Uh the short, the short yeah. So remember this for next issue uh, next episode too. The short lived group known as the Shock Troop were formed by Dr. Druid. He used his powers of mesmerism to recruit the other members into joining his battle against So what did he hypnotize them into joining him? <laughs> Very few adventures of the group are recorded before they apparently disbanded. It looks like Quasar 45, 46, and Quasar 50 are their only appearances that I can find. As a group, I know yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh 
like I said, I think the skull showed up in it. What was it like Cap America? Was it like around 420 or something? Oh, get, get another Grunewald thing. So, mm -hmm. oh no, the uh, Shadow Woman is Jillian Woods. Yes, it's like Jessica Drew. And I think there's an explanation for that outfit, but I don't remember what it is. <laughs> we'll probably get it next issue. <laughs> I'm looking it up now. Uh, her father abandoned his family as soon as she could. Woods left home and became a student at the University of San Francisco. Her interest in the occult drew her to a lecture by Dr. Druid, after which she felt compelled to approach him. I wonder why. Druid soon learned that her attraction was a holdover from a past life in King Arthur's time. Wow. When, okay. <laughs> when Druid was a princess and Woods was an alchemist. <laughs> okay. The two soon became lovers. Oh, so he made her dress up like Spider Woman. Okay. Uh, as well as mentor and student. Ooh. During an essay of mystic items, Woods accidentally released a demon which slew her. Druid used a statue called the Bride of Sloroth to resurrect her, but the process left her linked to the Dark Force to avoid causing anxiety and possibly possibly to sage his own guilt druid told her that the demon had caused her new powers and not that she had died when druid formed shock troop woods joined the, the team as shadow woman along with the living mummy and skull the slayer on their first mission yeah they and quasar so this is their first mission uh, they uh, oh the Drew put together another team, the Secret Defenders, and Woods was called. Yeah, okay. So they, so they, I guess they show up in the uh, Secret Defenders after a while. Her, Doctor Druid, and I guess they teamed up with Luke Cage and Deadpool. Okay. <laughs> they they went after Malachi, who was trying to gather the scattered parts of the Mobius Stone at the Chicago Museum of Art. He tried to stop them by bringing paintings to life. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, Malachi almost killed Shadow Woman, but she escaped by turning, you know, use, using the shadows. Uh, oh, then they face Swarm. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, she make her. Civil War? Did she make an appearance? Uh, yeah, I guess she must have appeared in Secret War or Civil War. Woods hadn't been involved in the superhuman community for years and took no direct part in the Civil War, although her name appeared on a list of suspected anti-registration superpowered beings. Uh, she remained off the grid as a civilian living in Phoenix to avoid the hassles of the Registration Act, but she was unable to secure meaningful employment on her own. Agents of the Brand Corporation offered her a job in private security overseas. After a chance encounter with the Thunderbolts alongside Steel Spider and American Eagle, uh, she took the uh, company's offer immediately and fled the country to avoid further hassle by the Thunderbolts. And okay. she Okay, last thing. She was one of the many applicants to be the nanny to Luke Cage and Jessica Jones' daughter. Okay. And I guess that was her nanny plan. applicant. Wow, what a credit. Yeah, that was her last appearance. Yeah, I guess is trying to get come to nanny for Luke Cage and Jessica Jones' daughter. So yeah, sporadic appearances here and there, uh, Ray. <laughs> they show up here, they make what, like a quick cameo in fifty and then Yeah. Secret Defenders run and then yeah. That's it. Nothing on her until Civil War. But we can get into the other members next episode too. But thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, I'm still waiting to get the quantum bands back. I mean, I just, I guess part of it is it felt like him not having the quantum bands was just so drawn out back when I was reading it, you know? Yeah, well, you had to wait month to month, yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, it just I don't hit, know. I just, it just hit me. It's one of those stories where, like, Somebody has to get used to different powers. You know, it's like when Superman got changed into electricity. Mm -hmm. Electric blue, mm -hmm. blue and red. Superman red, Superman blue. Oh, yeah. He just blue and yeah, then he got split into red and blue. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like the art's been it's kind of inconsistent over the last you know, yeah. few issues. So 
what it's, the hell? It's still good, but it's not the heights that it was. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of what hurt this this series was with the art started getting inconsistent, and then I think Star Blast is gonna really hurt it. Well, I mean, if you think about it, there was what only like four artists until we hit forty, right? And then they went nuts, yeah. And then boom, we're getting you know different artists every couple of issues. It seems like, but what do you think, Matt? Yeah, yeah, I sort of echo those comments. It's it's a bit of a, a holdover issue. I mean, you, you get a, to see a continuation of a fight and then a fight against two sort of shoehorned shoe in <laughs> opponents from his past and a little bit of the ongoing Kayla Kismet back. Road trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent adventure, bogus journey, and um, but whatever. I mean, it, it's fun. It goes, it goes by fast, but it, it's you know. It, it, I think we, at the time it probably just kind of alluded to what Will was saying earlier. Just makes you want to get the quantum bands back even more, and and it, it leaves you with a little bit of excitement at the end. First of all, with this whole new contingency of, of villains, presumably. And the fact that you're, it says it's going to be concluded, is everything going to be concluded? <laughs> or just this thing with the, you know, this band of, of, of opponents? But, yeah. Yeah. See, I had forgotten about a lot of, not necessarily what had happened. I just didn't realize that it took, it had taken this many issues. Yeah. yeah. I thought he got his bands back sooner, but what, it's going to be 47 until he gets the bands back. And that's the uh, Thunderstrike cover, right? Yep. Seriously, I told Ray he should read the Thunderstrike series. So maybe that, if he hasn't yet, maybe that'll spur him after we do 47 and 48. But yeah, I mean, playing off what uh, Matt was saying before, yeah, Quasar gets attacked by, you know, the Colossus cosplayer and C3 (laughs) Zemo. (laughs) Nice. Uh, And then Matt. You have to say yet for us. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I did learn a little, bit of, a, a very little bit of Russian. I, I briefly had a, a, a very strange friendship with this, this uh, when I returned from a, a long trip from, uh, from Europe a while back, I was going to see a band at a show and this, this kid who was in front of me in line showed his passport to get in and, uh, as a ID form, and I asked him, I'm like, oh, are you from Europe? He goes, no, Russia. And I was like, oh, wow. Because I, I don't think I've ever met anyone from Russia before. <laughs> and uh, he was he was from, uh, oh, what's the, Siberia, which is way. Wow. <laughs> and it was funny because I was like, well, what are you doing here? He's like, I came to work for a Polish construction company and they went out of business the week I got here. I was like, is this a joke? <laughs> and um, I ended up like becoming friends with him and getting him a job and like helping him find like a new apartment and stuff. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Andre. Cool. Andre. Yeah. I thought he was. He, set- he even, yeah, he even did like a stand up comedy set and it was really weird. But. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. thought you. I thought you were setting us up for a joke when you said Polish construction company. <laughs> yeah, well, they specialized in making screen doors for battleships. <laughs> but yeah, I learned a couple of Russian things. Uh, Privyet and Baka means hello and goodbye, and uh, I would r- try to memorize it by singing, "You say Privyet." I say Baka, like the Beatles song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know like three Russian words. And uh, now, now I will teach you English. See you later, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he learned some. I tried to explain what's okay, and I had to go to a Red Sox game, and I thought I did a really good job of explaining how baseball is played oh. so i talked for like 15 minutes straight and then the first thing he he looked he just looks at me and points to the pitcher and goes but what is he doing 
So I just I didn't explain pitching. I explained everything else. No, no, no. Try to explain baseball is complicated. (laughs) No, no, no. American baseball, unnatural. Man with four balls cannot walk. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I think this podcast taught Ray English. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he, that's how he learned it from his native Australian. <laughs> Lift elevator. I know. We're, oh, that's right. <laughs> we're doing Scarlet Spider. Yeah, we're talking about an elevator. And he said, he just all of a sudden he's like, yeah, the lift. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> The big bazooka. <laughs> All right. Anything else on this one, boys? No, I got. I got nothing. All right. So yes, next time, Quasar, Shock Troop, Presence, Neutron, and those pesky antibodies. Uh, I probably just more hate- Kayla. Yeah. And HD. I hate and the. I, I hate the Presence just because of what comes later. <laughs> He's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. But yes, send us your thoughts. Read next week's uh, issue. It'll be our last bandless issue. So email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail, 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember to follow the Quantum Zone on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Follow all the Capes and Lunatic stuff. Follow one convenient place. That's Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support the sponsors, Tweaked Audio, Hunt a Killer, Pod Life the Vo- Book, Volume 1, now in digital and paperback. And when you go on Amazon, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Because please help us support this show, the network, and Rob Master Doom Southgate go back and look at my history and you find out I am right so much more often than I'm wrong. Mark my words. Macona, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at the, right. at, the at the Russian delegation of Boston <laughs> welcoming new visitors uh, at recently closed down Polish construction sites <laughs> or you can find me all, all across social media platforms at Matt Kona, M A T T K O N A. Got to be longer. I need a full length one. <laughs> that was a long plug, right? It was kind of I know. All right. All right. The Duke, Will Allred, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at W A L L R E D uh, Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and probably Instagram, although I don't think I ever check that. But uh, you can also find my self published comic, uh, Diary of Night, at diaryofnight.com. Pick it up. And, oh. huh? I said, pick it up. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff about Quasar at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. I'll put it in my navel. Exactly. <laughs> ah, yes. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. Come back next time. The shock troop showed up for a menace that really, oh, well, it really isn't that supernatural, is it? No, but it does involve dark force. So I guess technicality then why aren't they over in the new warriors as well <laughs> good question <laughs> maybe that's why they went out of business so quick it's like ah dr strange got here already yeah <laughs> dr strange dr strange <laughs> dr. i just can't wait till uh ray finds out who uh holly is so we if he he tell us if it was worth the wait or not yeah. <laughs> I still just love his reaction to finding out what the Starhawk's dad was. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> All right, everyone. Join us next time. Remember, Quantum Zoners, keep it dark for us. <laughs>